So the first type of analogy that we start to draw uh, among these different types of systems is in their, in their variables, okay? their power flow variables specifically. So we have considered mechanical translational, mechanical rotational, and electronic systems, which we refer to as different energy domains. Okay, so electronics, mechanical translational, mechanical rotational. There's also, in system dynamics, we'll consider fluid and thermal energy domains as well. Uh, there are analogies among these systems uh, that allow for generalizations of certain aspects. These generalizations will allow us to use a single framework for unifying the analysis of these and other dynamic systems. There are two important classes of variable uh, common to lumped parameter dynamic systems, across variables and through variables. An across variable is one that makes reference to two nodes of a system element. So we're going to, uh, uh, for instance, the following are across variables. Well, let's define first the across variable for a, uh, uh, an electrical system. So let's just pick a resistor. We could have chosen any element. But which, which is the variable that's defined um, uh, with reference to two nodes on the element? Voltage. Voltage. So voltage is the electrical cross variable. Now for a translational mechanical system, um, let's consider like a spring. What is defined across the spring, from one side of the spring to the other side? Force. Hmm? Force. Force. So typically, we don't need reference to both sides. The force is going to be constant through, through an element, right? So velocity, so velocity right? The, it, it, displacement is across the, the spring. That's the easier one to think of is displacement across it, which the, this position versus this position. Um, but the velocity is the power flow variable that's related by the derivative, so velocity. That's what we choose. Also. V, conveniently, or confusingly, whichever you prefer. Ooh, I'm working on my ampersand, you know. Oh, yeah. I like that one. Whew, that was the best one yet. Okay. Uh, and then finally, for rotational mechanical systems, um, like angular velocity, right? So... For instance, if you had a long, flexible shaft, um, then we would say, you know, that's just like having a spring, rotational spring in here. And this side of the spring has one angular velocity, and the other side of the, of the spring has another angular velocity. And so, that's across the element, and that's an across variable. So those are our three across variables for the energy domains we've considered thus far. We denote a generalized across variable with the script V. So I'll try to write it like that, the script V. Another nearly flawless character by me. So good job. Uh, <laughs> The next one will probably look a lot worse. So a through variable is one that represents a quantity that passes through a system element. For instance, the following are through variables. So for that, that resistor, yeah, the current flows through it, right? What about for a mechanical element, so like a, a translational element, so like for the spring? So that one would be force? That one's force, right? And I'm going to do a little, a little description of why that's true. So over here, let's draw ourselves in a, a, a spring for a moment. 
so. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to take an element out of it. Okay? So I'm going to take that element out right here. And then the spring continues around. Okay. So I took an element out of the spring. Now, this element must have. a force that holds it there, right? From this. So say it's in compression. So it's got it's got some force acting on it there. I kind of wanted that to be a color. So let's try that again. Yeah. There's a force there and there's also got to be a force from the other side too, right? Now, we cut it so like I mean it's not connected now but but if we were to model it it would be stuck there like if, if it's in compression you could think of like cutting this thing and then like sandwiching it in there and it's behaves essentially the same right as if it wasn't cut so we have this element um, we know that Newton's laws have to apply to it so let's go ahead and sum the forces if this force is F1 and this is F2 then we know that F1 minus F2 has to equal the mass of the element times the acceleration of the element, right? Good old Newton helping us out. But if we take a small enough chunk here, we can say the mass is negligible. And that tells us that F1 equals F2. And you could, so you, so you say, okay, so if you could do this for any element in the spring all the way along, you know that the force coming in the right side is equal to the force coming in the left side, and you just keep going all the way along, and you, and you end up from one side of the spring all the way to the other side of the spring, you see that the force is transmitted through the spring completely. Now, if your spring element as a whole became really, it was really large spring, uh, you might need to take into account its mass. In which case, you would want to model it as an ideal spring with no mass um, and, a, 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 and a mass element. Okay, so that, you know, for, for the situation where you have a spring that's really massive spring, which does happen, um, you do need to take the mass of the spring into account sometimes. But for an ideal spring that's massless, um, this is true. And if the mass of the spring is not very large compared to the rest of your masses in the system, then it's usually negligible. So. All right, so I think that that, was, that should prove to you that the force is a through <coughs> variable. It tran it's transmitted through the spring element. Similarly, the torque is transmitted through the rotational element. Ooh, ampersand time. Ah, oh, yeah, pretty good. So the torque, uh, you could think of it as being, say we had that same like rotational spring situation. Um, you could do the same analysis of an, uh, an element here in the middle uh, with torques, something with torques. So you can do the same analysis. As long as the moment of inertia is small, which it usually is compared to the rest of the system, then you can ignore the, si the, the, the moment of inertia, and the torque is transmitted perfectly through. All right. We denote a, a generalization, or a generalized through variable as F, so script F. Then we're also, notice how every time we introduced one of these uh, energy domains. We had the power flow variables that were interesting and then also the integrated version of each of those power flow variables was interesting. So it had some physical meaning. Um, so for the generalized across variable, um, that's just the integral of the generalized um, um, uh, so generalized integrated across variable x is just the 
integral of the generalized across variable v. Okay, so in one case, um, this was, for instance, the displacement x, and this was the uh, velocity v, right? So that's an interesting quantity, so we just define generalized integrated across variable that way. Uh, in the case of, of uh, the through variable, if we have an integrated version of the generalized through variable, um, then we have the uh, integral of this. So this could be, for instance, the momentum, um, and this could be the force. Or uh, this could be the charge, and this could be the current. Right. So these across and through variable generalized variables, um, they're useful, but I'll talk about. It. I, so they're useful, but we don't use them all that often. We more often are, are um, going to use the concept of across variable and through variable, and not so much using these generalized. Uh, variables for them. We could do all of our analysis in terms of this. So every force, every current, every whatever we could write a script F for, and every voltage, every velocity, etc. we could write a script V for. Um, but usually we just use the, the typical variables that we use for velocity and force instead because it's a little clunky to use this stuff. Um, but in, in, in general the um, the power for one of these generalized systems is the product of the through and across variables. Um, the important thing, of course, being that there is a class of variables that are across variables and there's a class of variables that are the through variables. That's the big, the big takeaway. So that's, our first, so that's our first analogy then, is that there is an analogy um, among all the systems with their across variables, voltage, velocity, angular velocity. And then there's also an analogy for all these systems with their through variable, whatever's transmitted through each element, so the force, the uh, torque, and the current. Okay? That's, that's all I've got for you today. Is it kind of like, do they kind of obey? KCL, yeah, so, so what we're going to do next time on Wednesday is we're going to define uh, general, generalized versions of each of the elements. So like energy storage elements of a certain type, dissipative elements, source elements. And then we'll be able to do essentially KCL, KVL with mechanical systems. <laughs> And then, and then we'll then we'll finally be ready to introduce like motors. And it'll be yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, but motors and generators are essentially the same thing. I should write some problems for this. I know, I know, I know. Zombie apocalypse problem. You find a motor and you retrofit it as a generator. A and I just figured out you know it's funny. We just got it. And somebody just came.